what is Gregorian chant? There are varying steps to answering this question, each of which gradually defines the path to understanding its true identity. Gregorian chant is the true music of the liturgy of the Roman Catholic Church. We should remember this at all times. The foremost characteristic of Gregorian chant is ecclesiastical in nature, and as such places this repertoire, let us call it that, in a class of judgment which transcends the mere artistic dimension and points directly to the special rapport between the Church and the Word of God. The Church has established a unique relationship between Gregorian chant and the Word, to the point where in this relationship one is able to identify the Church's own thoughts on the Word, its reflections, its interpretation, its exegesis. In other words, the Church is telling us that when we sing Gregorian chant, we are expressing precisely the Church's own thoughts on the text. It is telling us this first of all. Not just this, but this first of all. There is much more, of course, but for now we are assured that we live and breathe the Church's interpretation of the Scripture and are guided by it. This would suffice to define Gregorian chant as a true symbol of the Roman Catholic Church. A second level of response is this. Gregorian chant is, here we will be expanding on what was said before, the audible version of the interpretation of the word. The interpretation of the word makes sounds. It takes shape as a musical event. It gives sound to the word. We will understand how great a responsibility is now entrusted to sound, essentially conceived as a vehicle of the senses. And now the next step. The interpretation of the word becomes sound, therefore the Church accepts the sound, consecrating it as an integral part of the liturgical event and renders it a vehicle of the senses, or rather something that is much more than simply an embellishment of a text. This is a crucial step. The text that is sung must coincide with the text that is explained. The explanation of the text rests in the precise composition of sound. Gregorian chant thus becomes the explanation of the word according to the Church's wish expressed in sound. An even more comprehensive answer to our initial question would be the following. Gregorian chant is the liturgical contextualization of the audible interpretation of the word. This means that the word is not only interpreted and sung, but furthermore it is contextualized. The word thus becomes a liturgical event, placing itself at the heart of the ecclesiastical experience. Take note, the word is not merely put into the liturgy it becomes itself the liturgy. The song of the liturgy is actually the liturgy itself in song. Let us pause for a moment to observe the course which we have briefly followed. We started from the word 
or rather from an order given by the church. A gift, or if you will, a talent, a talent which must not be buried, but must be used, traded, in order to bear fruit, to develop, and finally to be returned. This restitution is an audible event that communicates with the senses and that soars on high to become liturgy. The sound itself, the artistic component, is functional. It coincides with this exegetic design. In other words, Gregorian chant transmits the thoughts of the church on the text and above all demonstrates not only how the same text is to be understood, but how it should be celebrated. The solemn pronouncement of the final Amen essentially recognizes the truth. At this point it would be best to add another observation on our path to understanding and in response to the initial question. The liturgical nature of Gregorian chant lies in its capacity for being structured in a precise form and style. There is no such a thing as liturgy without shape. Liturgy is the exact opposite of improvisation. The form is not mere appearance. On the contrary, the form reveals the substance of which it is the sign, the proof, the guarantee. In reality, there are no Gregorian chants, but rather Gregorian forms belonging to each individual chant. Each form reveals, with the variety of melodic and rhythmic movements, a precise structural nature. Even the shape itself, another significant step on our journey, is intimately associated with the significance of the liturgy. So, for example, if I am referring to an introit, I automatically define the moment, form and style of that passage. In the present case, I would not only be defining the music which opens the Eucharistic celebration. I would also be implying that it involves an antiphonal reciting tone, form, in a semi ornato style. An introit is this, it is born as such. It has this form, this style. It cannot be any different, otherwise it is not an introit. If I refer to gradual, offertory, responsory, or any other Gregorian form, I am always identifying precise structures, not Gregorian compositions or chants. Allow me, if you will, a, a small personal digression about the current situation. I asked myself if it is legitimate and what purpose there can be in systematically disregarding this prerequisite given to us by the ancient monody of liturgical tradition, which for centuries has regulated the relationship between musical form and liturgical significance. I'm considering, for example, the chants of Ordinarium Miss, and in particular Gloria and Credo, which, owing to widespread and inexorable favor on the part of the assembly, have become something else entirely that is responsorial forms. In order to persuade the assembly to sing, with the illusion and grave misconception of promoting active participation. Simple and often banal refrains are indiscriminately scattered 
in every part of the celebration. The depressing outcome of this habit is to produce dubious responsorial forms entirely alien to the nature of music and the liturgy, always envisaged differently by the Church. To return to our reflections, so far we have been able to observe how the text must contain set elements in a prescribed order. This is the root of the liturgical music. With Gregorian chant, the Church sets this requirement in stone for all time. However, we must be aware that the Church itself does not say that only Gregorian chant can be sung, but that Gregorian chant will show us a compulsory path to follow for all time. We must be aware that to ignore or to disregard in practice an underlying principle is to contradict de facto the Church's teaching on liturgical music.
Yes, sir.